All right, going over the basics, the very basics of uh, painting here. And first thing probably everyone learns is dry brushing. So let's go over how to do that. Uh, first, let's talk about the brush. Uh, dry brushing, you don't need a really expensive brush. This one was a cheapie, cost $1. Uh, you do want a flat brush, uh, not a round, because uh, the rounds, it's harder to get all the, uh, the paint out. The best brushes are actually uh, what are called cat's tongues brushes, and they have like a rounded top, almost looks like a makeup applicator. Um, those work really good because the paint occasionally uh, tends to collect on the very ends, and you don't have that problem with a cat's tongue. Uh, so this one I just bought. Uh, this is my good old standard dry brush. As you see, you put quite a bit of wear on the brush, but this still works very good. And while I said I don't use rounds uh, for dry brushing, I do use this one because this one is splayed out so far, it actually makes a really good dry brush. And occasionally when uh, you need to dry brush something a bit more delicate, a small area, uh, as my regular paint brushes get worn, they get uh, downgraded into dry brushes. So this is another dry brush, though it doesn't look as bad. So the purpose of dry brushing is to highlight uh, the figure, of course. Uh, it's a very simple, uh, kind of crude way of highlighting, but it's easy to learn. It's, uh, it's very fast, of course. Um, so let's give it a shot on our bile thrall here. This thing is undercoated in Vallejo model color um, English uniform. And I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to. Well, what color am I going to use here? There we go, desert yellow. I think this is desert yellow, the label's off. Would be a good highlight color for the English uniform. Uh, for the purposes of demonstration, so the dry brushing stands out a bit more, I'm gonna mix in a little beige with my desert yellow. So here we go, got the brush. Now let's mix in a lot so you can see the difference. So I got a big goop on my brush now. Now we need to wipe it off. So uh, paper towels work good. Uh, I prefer a t-shirt for major dry brushing since it absorbs a lot more. And you really want to rub as much of that paint out as you can. So you get to something like that. Um, now the way, best way to test out uh, if you have the right consistency with your brush is actually to use your hand. Um, if you brush, dry brush over your hand, you can see I'm getting a good dry brush here because it's not filling in all the little wrinkles on the back of my hand. If you have too much paint on the brush and you try this, you see how you get streaks? That means you have way too much paint on the brush. So we don't want streaks. So, wash that out again. And dry brushing, it's, uh, you can change depending on exactly what you're painting. You can use a scrubbing motion or just a light um, pass by, kind of depending on what you're doing, you know, what's being painted and then the color and other factors. And as I said, this is, uh, this would be way too light of a color for a highlight for this figure but I'm um, just doing it for demonstration purposes. Direction is also occasionally important. Um, if you got something like these folds of skin on the back of the figure, uh, you don't want to dry brush this way because then you're going to fill in all those uh, areas for shade. So down, downward angle is better. And so there we go, figure is highlighted. Now, um, let's say we want to add another highlight. I'm going to add, actually let me add a big dollop of white. 
Again, this is just for demonstration purposes. This is not what I would be using to uh, highlight these colors. But if you want to do a second dry brush layer for some extra highlights, that's a bit, need a bit more off there. So dry brushing in this time, a lot lighter touch to the brush and concentrating more on the upper areas or large areas. Basically hold, hold the figure like that and whatever you can see, highlight it. This is very messy, of course. I'm ruining the base that I previously demonstrated. But there we go. So that is dry brushing. Now, two things where uh, dry brushing doesn't do that great on. Um, first of all, it does not work too well on rounded surfaces, uh, just because in order for this technique to work, you need to have basically some sort of texture for the paint to grab onto. Um, so round surfaces, like the horses, the rump of a horse, I always get questions on how do you paint that. Well, it's because everyone dry brushes and it's hard to uh, dry brush a a smooth round surface so it's really hard to dry brush say a flat area like this but across your knuckles like here or your fingers it's a lot easier because you have some natural uh, indentations. The second area where dry brushing fails is it's not incredibly accurate as uh, towards um, overhead lighting scheme so when you're painting you want to imagine the sunlight over the figure here and that tells you where you place the shade and the um, the highlights. Uh, for example here these folds in the back is a perfect example actually. You can see, um, let me get a pointer, because the dry brushing hopefully you can see the uh, the highlights are like right here wherever the flesh sticks out the most and the shade is in the recesses where the dry brushing didn't get to. So basically, if using my fingers here, the shade is here and the highlight is here and here. However, with an overhead lighting scheme, uh, the light would be coming from up here. So ideally, the highlight would be here and here, and then the shade would be here and down here. It's a subtle difference um, but once you start applying that to uh, miniatures using other more advanced techniques like layering or wet blending, um, the results really do speak for themselves and get a lot more, you get a lot more contrast when painting the figure. So there is that. That's dry brushing for you in a nutshell. Uh, very simple, effective, not perfect though. All right, thanks for watching.